what on earth has ended up on my test bench? This does not belong here. This is the Apple 2013 Mac Pro, late 2013, early 2014. Uh, here we are in 2018, Apple's still selling these as new. You know, only the finest top of the line X79 chipset. Xeon Socket 2011, the original Socket 2011. And maybe some Xeon V2s, no 2011 V3. It's at least quad channel. Although someone at some point paid between three and four thousand dollars for this machine. This is a 3.7 gigahertz quad core with uh, 12 gigs of RAM. It's not even a quad channel configuration. Look at this. We've got three sticks of RAM. I think this is the uh, Fire Pro D300s as well. So, you know, it's not exactly, uh, not exactly top of the line, not exactly state of the art. Of course, did a Mac rehab video and gosh, forever ago, feels like a lifetime ago. And uh, you know, it was kind of popular, Mac rehab, Macing for less. And so I think this is, despite its odd appearance and uh, plurality of T8 screws, it is upgradable. So I think we need to rehab this Mac. Let's get started. I have trouble figuring Macs out philosophically. All my usual methods really don't work for figuring out. I want to like it from a, you know, the Unix standpoint, but then Apple immediately cancels that out and even goes a little bit farther on the spectrum in terms of not really liking it. But that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video is to tear into this thing and boy howdy, we've got our t Torx driver and that's exactly what we're gonna do. If you're an Apple app developer or you need the Apple ecosystem for some reason, you know, paying full retail for Apple products always stings a little bit. Wouldn't blame you at all for upgrading your system. This particular Mac Pro has a single M.2. I swear I think I've seen Mac Pros that have two M.2s, one on the other side. This one doesn't have that though. Could be wrong about that. Maybe I'm just imagining things. We've got six Thunderbolt 2.0 ports, four USB 3 ports, two gigabit ethernet ports, HDMI, power, analog audio, and uh, headphone audio. And that's pretty much it. Uh, this thing is not super fun to take apart either. It requires some T8 screws. The upgrades I've got lined up for this thing, 64 gigs of memory. That's four 16 gig sticks of registered DDR3 memory because that memory is pretty cheap. It works really well in this thing. Got a 10 core Xeon E5 uh, 2680 V2. It's 10 cores, 20 threads, uh, 2.8 gigahertz base clock boost up to 3.5 gigahertz, I do believe and maybe a Samsung 960 Pro 512 gigabyte NVMe because the one that's in here I think is 256 gigabytes, so not quite enough room. That should be ample room for development and everything else. I might be able to flip this and sell it and then be able to buy an iMac Pro, which will probably last a little bit longer. Now, even though this is from 2013, and yes, I was making fun of it for the whole X79 thing, which you should because good, X79, I mean, come on. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's a little bit long in the tooth. Probably lasts about five more years though. The 2009 Mac Pro that I upgraded all those years ago is still in use, still using it, still compiling iOS applications, still testing and debugging things, using it for remote control of uh, lots and lots of phones. That works really well for debugging, testing, and, and everything else. It's getting a little long in the tooth. I figure this might be a worthy upgrade, but without breaking the bank because, well, it's an older machine and you know, you can, you can buy these for between $1,000 and $1,500 on the used market. New, you can buy one like this for around $2,000. So the price has come down a little, at least. It's still older hardware, though. Let's tear into it. So getting into this thing, it looks pretty clean, right? No, it's actually filthy. You got to take out these Torx bits. So when you flip up the top, there's a little antenna connector here and another ribbon cable. And then the, uh, the top pretty much comes off. This is basically one triangular heat sink. The two graphics cards and the CPU are all physically connected to the same chunks of aluminum. And this big fan in the top draws in all the air from the bottom, and that's how it, it does its cooling. The problem is that if you're running all three, this little fan can't really keep up. This fan runs all the time, so it does draw in dust and hair, that sort of thing. As we can see here, you know, this Mac, being a couple of years old now, it does have a lot of dust and debris and nonsense in it, so we'll want to clean that as we work on it. This, uh, this work on this Mac Pro, it's not hard, but it is tedious. I mean, this is an X79 computer after all. Uh, there's a circuit board in the bottom, so once you take the top off, you have to flip it over upside down and, 
and uh, you know unscrew the bottom basically to pop the bottom off and then you've got to very very carefully remove these overly delicate ribbon cables so that you can remove the bottom circuit board. That's necessary in order to get to the board that has the CPU on it. Now, the board that has the CPU on it is also behind the power supply so you got to take the power supply out in order to get to the CPU. And the CPU's got this sort of crappy little retention bracket and it's also screwed directly into the heat sink so it's a little problematic but lo and behold we get it unscrewed and what do we find there's a divot in our xeon cpu yeah i can see the copper jacket i've never seen a defective xeon cpu in here so that's just that's surprising you can also see the divot on the uh, the heat sink as well and wow the top of the processor is also warped i mean huh whoever said anything about apple quality control this is uh, this is sort of a an interesting find. I feel a little bit like Steve Ir Irwin. It's like, oh crikey, look! Oh, she's a she's a beaut. Except uh, she's a manufacturing defect. Oh wow, you don't see those every day. It is pretty rare. I mean, it it is a manufacturing defect, and I haven't seen a manufacturing defect like this in the IHS in really a long time. So once you get it, uh, once you get your CPU out, then it's just a matter of dropping in another CPU. This is of course our Z Xeon E5 2680V2. A little bit of thermal paste, uh, clean it with alcohol of course first, and then a little bit of new thermal paste really goes a long way. Especially if these things overheat, the uh, thermal paste can dry and crack and not be as good as it should be. So, you know, redoing the thermal paste on these if you're having any kind of issues with this model, it's not a bad idea in general. Again, not hard, but tedious and takes a long time. This particular sur surgery I think took me about 30 or 45 minutes, something like that. Not the fastest, not the slowest, it's, it's good enough. And I was also fiddling with the camera the whole time. So, you know, once you get the CPU replaced, it's just a matter of putting it all back together and pretty much the same, but reverse order. So there you have it. We've been running with this Mac for a couple of weeks now. No problems. Everything is, is basically operational. We use the 2680 V2. I think if I had to do it all over again, I'd pick the 2667 V2. That's a CPU that's got only eight cores instead of the 10 cores that we used here, but it will turbo all the way up to four gigahertz. This thing doesn't turbo quite as fast. Nevertheless, even though the 10 core 20 thread part is not something that Apple has shipped in any configuration of this particular Mac Pro, it works great. And the 64 gigabytes of memory doesn't hurt either. Now the server memory that's in here is a little slower. It's not the 1866 that this system does support, but you know, running Geekbench and stuff like that, performance really didn't make a difference. So if you decide this is a project that you're going to embark on, or maybe you get a sweet deal on an old quad core from 2013, and you decide to go from four to 10 cores, like we did, from you know 12 gigs of memory to 16 gigabytes of memory, I do share in pictures and in song and poetry, and written word, whatever you're into on the forums at Level 1 Techs. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.